Amen. Let us take our places. Amen. Let us take our places as we get ready for our worship experience. We're here right now for the last year of 2023. Amen. Amen. Now that's an accomplishment. There's some who started out are not here this morning, but God is still good. He's still in the blessing business. Uh, I'm going to start off our worship experience with our call of worship. Then I'm going to turn it over to our musicians to to get us ready for this year i know i i i pray is this is one year where the new year's eve is on sunday amen it seemed like it would be appropriate but then you have the others let's i, I, I call them the others amen that decide well i'm gonna sit at home because i got some things to do this night to bring in the new year but if you know like I know, you best to stay at home and make sure you go over into the new year. Amen? Amen. Uh, hallelujah. I, I, I last, these last 15, 20 years, I've been spending my New Year's with Jesus. Amen? Uh, amen. I don't need no noisemakers. I don't need no people acting crazy. I just need Jesus. Amen? Why? Because I need Jesus to protect me from the people that's acting crazy. Amen? hallelujah so we are we're here to worship we we do not choose a day to worship god we should be worshiping him every sunday or every day of the week give god the glory that he so richly deserves so our call of worship comes it says therefore god has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that's above every name so that at the name of jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Philippians 2 9 through 11 I was just talking about the new year coming this is New Year's Eve that does not mean we're gonna make it to New Year's oh, hallelujah I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade but times are short and I'm learning as my old pastors and my days in front are, are less than my days behind right now. And I got to live life according to what time is left for me. And if some of you understand what I'm talking about, you would agree with me. So we're going to have our worship experience this morning. We'll start with prayer. And then I'm giving it over to the musicians to give us a couple congregation numbers. Let us bow. Father God, we come in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we come knowing, God, that you are in charge, Father. You were in charge of all of 2023, Father. Now we stand here in your sanctuary, Father, in your house on the last day of the year. Father, we thank you, Father, for all that has occurred, Father, this past year. Father, there have been some ups and downs. There have been some mountaintops and some valleys. But God, I'm here to say thank you for the mountaintops and I also thank you for the valleys, Father. For Father, whatever you did, whatever happened in my life, Father, it strengthened me, Father. But one thing I know, Father, is I've gone through this year. I made it this far to the last day. Oh, there's some hours left, Father. I'm not claiming them right now because it's not in my power, but it's in your power how this year will end, Father. Too many of us think, Father, we're assuming, Father, that we shall be here in 2024. Yes, it's just a few hours away, but no telling what the devil can do in a few hours if we let him. So, Father, I'm not claiming that right now. I'm claiming the name of your son, Jesus, Father. I'm claim and knowing that he has all power in his hand father and whatever we have in store for us in these last couple hours 
he will be the one in charge of it, Father. So, Father, I say thank you this morning, Father, for all that's happened to me in the prior months, Father, in days and weeks. God, you have blessed me, Father. You have brought me through. Yes, I told you there have been some ups and some downs, but thank God for your son, Jesus, Father. And, Father, we're going to worship you this morning. Like, we're going to worship you like you may be coming in 2024. And I got to say this, it may happen in 2024. I'm not prophesying or saying it will, but we know you said we need to be ready like a thief because you'll come like a thief in the night, Father. Father. And Father, he seems to be in, in these last days, fathers. So Father, we're going to praise you this morning. I pray that the congregation lift up their voices and praise you this morning. I don't care how few of us there is. It's not about the numbers. It's about the faith in every each individual sitting in the pews. Church, we need to understand this, that it's not about numbers. It's about sincerity. Do you believe, truly believe that you're saved? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the head of your life and if he is the head of your life and your family you need to give a shout right now say thank you this morning because if it wasn't for him who was by your side this year you wouldn't be where you are right now you need to say thank you this morning because God is able and he's brought you through a mighty long way so father we pray in the next couple hours to give you the praise that you so richly deserve we're gonna shout hallelujah we're gonna to wave our hands we're gonna say thank you Jesus this morning so father we're gonna praise you we'll give you honor and glory forever and I want the church to say amen can I get a hallelujah this morning thank you Jesus this morning and our musicians come on give us a song brother Andre sister give us a song
to God, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the pastor, his wife, who is the mother. And um, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for this last past year. We've been gathered here over a year now, and it's going to be a new year. And we need to thank God that we made it to this point. It ain't the stroke of midnight yet, but I know tomorrow's not promised to nobody. So in this New Year's Eve celebration, scream and shout, let it all out. Yes. Because when next year come, it's going to be a new beginning of a new year. Another 365 days. But the good Lord has blessed us. Yes. He's carried us this far, and we're going to continue giving him the praise and honor so he can carry us on into glory. Our scripture reading will be coming out of 2 Corinthians. And it reads, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. And it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us to the ministry of reconciliation. I pray that everybody receive a blessing for the reading and the hearing of the word. And Deacon Ronnie is going to pray for us. Amen. Amen. Here we are, your children, on this New Year's Eve. We're not promised that we are going to cross over in 2024. But we thank you for 2023. You have been good to us, Heavenly Father. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. You have shown that you are mighty, that you are powerful, you are a mighty God. That nothing is too impossible for our God. 
We thank you for this day. These few hours you have given us, this, these hours you have given us to praise you, to lift you up, to give you all the glory and honor that's worthy, that you are worthy to be praised. You have shown to us that you are awesome. You are an awesome God. Yes. You are a powerful God. Nothing is too hard for you. You have shown us over and over again that you are our God. Nothing is too hard for you, Heavenly Father. You have raised us up from our bed of affliction. You have raised us from our sick bed. You have healed us like no other. You have touched us in a mighty way. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are going to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could ever ask for or imagine. On this New Year's Eve, we're going to lift up our voices and give you the praise. Because you are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be loved by you, Heavenly Father. You have been mighty good to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for 2023. For before we make any new New Year's resolutions, we're not sure that we're going to cross over. We're just going to lift you up and give you the praise honor and glory because you have been mighty good to us Heavenly Father no one can do us like you no one can do us like you oh Heavenly Father you are so good Heavenly Father so worthy to be praised oh Heavenly Father we can call on you in the midnight hour we can call on that name any time of the day any time of the night and you never put us on hold Oh, Heavenly Father, we can't thank you enough. As the scripture said, let everything that's had breath praise the Lord. Let everything that's breathing praise the Lord. You are our creator. You are our, you are our sustainer. You are everything to us. Where would we be this morning if it had not been for you? You brought us this far, Heavenly Father. We're not sure if we're going to make it to 2024. We thank you for 2023. And if you allow us to cross over, Father, we pray that someone will be saved. We pray that we will be about your business, lifting you up, giving you praise, honor, and glory. Heavenly Father, you are so worthy. Oh, Heavenly Father, there's no one in heaven and earth like you. Oh, Father, we can't find no one like you. As the songwriter said, no one can do us like Jesus. No one can do us like you. No one can do us like Jesus. We give you praise, honor, and glory. The sacrificial Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen.
time, anointing. Anointing. Fall on me. Anointing. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Let the power. sanctuary pure and holy pure and holy tried and true tried and true and with thanksgiving I'll be a living I'll be a living sanctuary sanctuary for you how many believe that? Let the Lord dwell. Say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. To be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Tried and true. And with thanksgiving. I'll be a living. Sanctuary for you.
Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts and we offer up this praise unto your name. Some of you know it already. Help me with it. So welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. Welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands and we lift our hearts and we offer up this praise unto your name so let us say well come into this place into this place welcome into this broken vessel welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name i think you've learned it now let's sing it together welcome oh well come into this place into this place welcome into this broken vessel welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name hallelujah hallelujah how many know that it has not been for the lord on your side we'd be in an awful situation wouldn't we and i'm thinking i'm saying some people are preparing for new year's eve tonight and they go sit up and watch the Dix Clark show. And, but when it comes time to recognize and who brought us safe this far, we, we fall a little short. Amen. I don't care what the world's going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate Jesus. They can, they, they can do all the partying they want tonight. Amen. But I want to just recognize who he is and that he brought us a mighty long way. There's another one uh, that came to my mind, and it might be a different key because you know how I am. He has done great things for me. Great things. Great things. He has done great things for me. How many got your testimony today? Oh, he has done great things for me. That's the whole song. Oh, yes, he has. He has done great things. Great things. He has done great things for me. Oh, yes, he has. He has done. Oh, he has done great things for me oh yes he has he has done great things great things he has done great things for me he's opened doors for 
for me and he has opened doors for me glory to God he is the open doors open doors he has opened doors for me one more time he has done it he has done great things for me let's praise him because he's done great things great things great things he has done great things for me hallelujah and we thank him for that the great things he's done. Now we're going to go for the book of Romans. This is the New International Virgin, Version that we're reading from. Uh, Romans 15th chapter. Those of you that have your bosom stand, those of you watching online, that's Romans the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4. Amen. We're going to be doing alternate, so I'll sing, I'll do the first verse, the fourth of you do the fifth, and vice versa, so we'll get to the end. Uh, four, four, four through 15, 13, four through 13, Romans 15th chapter, International Version, NIV. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So that with one mind and with one voice, you may glorify God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews and on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriots might be confirmed. I just want to repeat that, and moreover, that the Gentiles, that's us, might glorify God for his mercy. Isn't that something? Amen. He included me. Amen. Uh, where am I? Okay. Verse 10, again, it says, rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, Isaiah said, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will rise, arise to rule over the nations. In him the Gentiles will hope. Together, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overcome with hope and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and understanding of his word. You may be seated. Amen. We want to acknowledge... Any visitors in the house? Any visitors that have come join us today? If not, we just want to welcome our family together. Amen. Amen. So as we, we can greet one another, for we give, give, give us a minute or two just to greet each other, shake hands, and, and, and thank, thank God for, for joining together in fellowship today. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year to you. The Jesus in me. Love the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, so the Jesus in you, so easy, so easy, so easy, so easy to love. Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you, 
so easy. So easy. So easy. Oh, it was a Jesus in me. It loves a Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves a Jesus in you. So easy. So easy. So easy. So easy to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So easy. So easy. So easy. What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness. What a peace of mind leaning on the everlasting arm. We're leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. On the everlasting arm. Come on together. Lean in, lean in. Safe and secure from all along. We're leaning, leaning, leaning in on the everlasting arm. We're leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all along. Lean. On the everlasting arms. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're getting uh, requests for prayers over the internet. And for Facebook, we, 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 we acknowledge that. We're going to be praying for you. And, and, and the, the strange, well, I guess it's not strange. The Lord woke me up this morning with a dream about praying around the altar as a church. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and it, it, it wasn't, in my dream, it wasn't any bigger crowd than this. But for some reason, the Lord says it's time to come to the altar now. Time to recognize who he is, acknowledge who he is, thank him for what he's already done. Amen. Thank him. Amen. Hasn't he been a good God to you? I know he's been good to me. Hallelujah. So many things could have happened and the Lord kept his hand on us. So that you're here today and I'm here today just to acknowledge how good our God is. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. And then brother, I'm going to ask... Uh, Elder, Elder, I'm saying Elder, but Reverend McGee to, to lead us in, the, in our altar prayer. Now, Reverend McGee has so many names. I'm going to try to help you out here a little best I can. But uh, so, much, so much prayer is needed. Um, I'm trying to read my, hand, my husband's bad handwriting, so pray with me. Stamps <laughs> are <laughs> you say? <laughs> Amen. We have some additionals here. And Praise Sister, the Lord, everybody. Pray to in God good. Sister, Sister, Let me answer prayer. Sister Beverly. We want to pray. She asked prayer for her cousin with stamps. Another one, Elaine Harris. That's from Beverly. Elaine who? Elaine Hagen. Hoggins. Amen. Yeah, my handwriting is bad. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going to have too many forged checks in my lifetime. Amen. Then we have uh, coming off the internet, Sister Regina McGee for health. She needs prayer for her health. Then our dear sister Wendy, you know, sister Wendy Nelson, she was a member here, moved to Vegas. 
She's asking for prayer. Her brother Adam was admitted to the hospital this morning. So we want to keep her in prayer. Then I'm asking for prayer for my sister, Elaine Morgan. Uh, we buried a brother and a mother, and, and I got to think the strain was a little too much. I got a call that she had a slight stroke and had went into the hospital. Uh, she's out now, but she has some, some rehab to go through, so keep my family in prayer also. Amen. I think that's enough of my bad handwriting. So, <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. God, is any something you know just what you need before you even ask? Hallelujah. Prayer for the sick and shut in, needy, incarcerated, and bereaved. I had a call from a nephew, a message from a nephew saying he's going for parole in February. He's been incarcerated probably over 20 years now. But he's asking for prayer and he's asking for us to just lift him up in prayer. So we're going to keep him in prayer. Uh, Mount Olive Baptist Church, God has still got his hand on us, and he is still moving by his spirit. So we're going to trust him when we don't understand what he's doing. So follow him, Mount Olive Church. Uh, peace in Israel, Gaza, and Ukraine. We can't forget the war-torn countries from around the world that are going through suffering. Uh, young people, elderly people, women and children. And it's, a, it's a sad situation. And then I've, I've got a message about persecution of Christians in Nigeria and in, in uh, uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, where uh, uh, they're being persecuted even in jail, uh, jailed and imprisoned in, in China. Uh, the one gentleman who proclaimed Christ and wouldn't stop, they gave him 26 years in jail, so in prison. So we, we got to pray. Uh, because, you know, we don't know how blessed we are to be in a country where we can call on the name of Jesus and not be persecuted. And it's still going on. Amen. And India, also in India, that, that was one of the top three nations. And, and uh, the, my brother's a bishop for one of the churches in, in, in India. And uh, they're asking him to come visit. And if they put him in jail, I'm going to pray God uh, keep his hand on my brother. I don't want him going over there and end up, we don't see him for a while. But anyway. We got to keep praying for them because they are being persecuted around the world. Uh, Deacon Guillory in the Armenian home, Sister Harrison, and she's um, still shut in herself, but uh, had buried her husband about a month ago now. Mother Guillory, Kenneth Davis, uh, uh, Keith Davis, I'm sorry, that's Sister Boykin's uh, son going through uh, chemo and, and now uh, we just keep, keep God's hand on him. Uh, Glenda Smith. Margie Kennedy, Gregory Washington, Sherelle Higgins, Joe Mays, Joe is home, and he's asking for prayer as he's continuing to recover from cancer. Um, Pat, uh, Patricia Jones and family, Mary McGee, Sister Mae Daniels, that's the sister of Brother Turney, Michael Norris, Erica Williams, Sister es um, Easter's daughter uh, Kafara, Rendell Jackson, she, I spoke with her. She's doing much better. She's still asking that we continue to lift her in prayer. Rita Hubbard, little T.J. Grant, he's going for brain surgery. A tumor is coming back. He's uh, seven years old, and this is the second surgery. So his, my, my sister, his grandmother, is saying uh, that she's just praying that God will, that when they do the test, that the tumor won't be there. So I'm going to agree in touch with, with her on that. Um, that's... Um, Mr. Phillips, that's Galen Phillips, Michael Bostick, Versi Boinkin, and family. We're praying for you and your family, Versi. Detra Shaw, Mia Brunch, James Williams, that's uh, Sister Gray's nephew. Wendy Nelson's niece, she had asked for prayer of, for um, Ariana Ricks and her mother. So we're keeping all of them in prayer right now. Also, I can't remember Sybil's last name, but in, in Sacramento, she said her daughter's going through cancer treatment um, and has been in treatment for almost a year now. So we, she's asking that we pray for her daughter. So we're praying, Sybil, if you're watching today, we're praying for your daughter as well. Um, as we come to the altar together, uh, God has a, has a word for you, but there's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he will do for you. We'll come together here at the altar, those that want to come around the altar. Or if you want to just pray where you are, that's fine too. But the fervent prayer of the righteous does avail much. 
God is able. God is able. Yes, he is. My, my older sister said, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. And the song said, you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you yield him your body and so lay it all at the altar. Reverend McGee. To all the names, uh, and hopefully you guys are viewing, all the names that were spoken, my wife and everyone else that's dealing with sickness right now, there with Israel's dealing with, all the Pacifics that were called out this morning on behalf of prayer, and everyone present here, we all have a need. But in uh, my Sunday school lesson this morning, and I just read, when Jesus was going uh, through the city, they said he went to a certain place. And that word just stood out. To me, it felt like, Mother, that that certain place where he met them right where they were at. See, they didn't go to him. They saw him from afar off, but they, he put himself in a place where they were able to seem. And though what we're asking God for seem, sometimes it seem afar off. We have to know that God is able to meet us right where we at. See, the scripture says that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask. It didn't say what we ask, just what we ask. He said, above all that we ask or could ever think. His ways aren't our ways, neither our thoughts his. He said, just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so is his thoughts higher than ours. We just have to trust and know that he's more than able to deliver and he will deliver, but we have to trust him with all of our hearts. So, Father God, we just come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord, just thanking you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your incredible mercy and grace, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, how you deposited your word into a dark and void world, Father God, but even before you did that, Heavenly Father, before you spoke anything into existence, O oh God, you said, Heavenly Father, and now we can read it for ourselves. You said you first loved us, even before the creation of the world. And then, O oh God, you also reminds us that the Lamb, you, Jesus Christ, we might not understand it, but you said the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Oh, Father God, and we thank you for it. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because that tells me, Heavenly Father, that even before the creation of the world, before you spoke anything into existence, before you made man in your image, and then you took woman, Father God, and then you took man's rib and you created woman, Father God, before you did any of that, oh God, you had already made a way for, our, for us to come out of our troubles before we got in them. Oh, Father God, you said you're the way and you're the life. But no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And so, Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace and mercy on behalf of the name that's above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you, O oh God, mighty are you, Oh, Lord, 
Oh, Father God, be Lord, Heavenly Father. Be victorious, oh God, over our sickness in our body. Let your name be glorified, oh God. Be victorious, oh God, over the conditions, Father God, that we hear about and we see that's going on in the world. The hatred, oh God. Give us a heart, a mind to love, Father God. And give us, Heavenly Father, the ability to be able to do it, Heavenly Father, without looking at any excuses, oh God. Because you said in your word that love never fails. Love conquers all, oh God. Love raised you up on the third day. Love caused you to stay up on the cross. But you didn't stay there, oh God. When they took you down, Father God, you rose up, Heavenly Father. Raise us up, O oh God, in the midst of everything we're going through. Raise us up, O oh God, in our thinking, Heavenly Father. Let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus, O oh Father God. So that when we speak, Heavenly Father, to our circumstances, we will look at our circumstances and we will speak to them and we will say, hear the word of the living God, O oh, circumstances, and O oh, dry bones, Father God. I don't care how dry you are. Live, O oh, dry bones. Live, O oh, dry bones. Hear the word of God. We not coming in our name. We come in our Father's name. And the Father's name is a strong and righteous name. And the righteous run to that name. And they are safe. Keep us safe, Father God. Once again, Heavenly Father, heal in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Bring joy in the name of Jesus. Bring unity in the name of Jesus. Do that, O oh God which only you are able to do, Heavenly Father. You said, oh God, this is your word. You said you would never share your glory with no man. No one, oh God. Let no one get the glory. And for your name's sake, Heavenly Father, show up, oh God. And show off, Father God. Show off in our sickness, Father God. Show off in the midst of our pain, Father God. Show off in our separation, oh God. Heal, oh God. We know you're able. You're going to do it, oh God. We're not just singing the songs. You gave us the ability to praise. We praise you, Father God, in the midst of everything that's going on. No more being like the nine leopards that got healed and walked away. Let all of us be like the one. And went back and gave glory to God. Let's give glory to God for what he's already done. For when I think about the goodness of God. My soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, church. Praise be to the God in heaven. Oh, God, send your rhema word that's in heaven. And, Father God, let it do that, Heavenly Father, which is according to your good and perfect will. You said, oh, God, that you came that we may have life, and have it to its fullest. You're not a God that you can lie. Oh, Father God, by faith and faith alone, we release your word, Heavenly Father. You said where two or three join together, you would be in the midst. We release it. That rhyme word, that word that never returned void, oh God. Do that, Heavenly Father, which the word purposed to do. It was in you, Father God, before the foundation of the world, before you spoke one thing, you spoke all things. Have your way, O oh God. 
in the name that's above every name. And like that song that we sang, let the church say, Amen.
Thank you, Lord. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For you are great. Oh, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. I don't have to say anything. Feel his presence in his place. Somebody needs. Somebody needs the word this morning. God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your presence this morning we thank you for being with your saints this morning Father for you know what we need and what we need is you this morning we thank you for your Holy Spirit we thank you for his presence right now there's someone needed him right now Someone right now needs to shout hallelujah because they were looking for an answer, not knowing that it would find it this morning in church. God, we thank you for his presence. Let him be the one in service this morning. Let him be the one that's guiding this morning. God, you're touching souls this morning. Souls that need to be touched, Father. 
For God, all we need is a touch from you. Diseases to be healed with a touch from you. Relationships we build healed with a touch from you. God, all we ask in this morning is a touch from you. Let your Holy Spirit reach out this morning. I feel him this morning. I feel him, Father. He's in the atmosphere. I feel the anointing, Father. Oh God, we welcome you this morning. We welcome your Holy Spirit this morning. You said you would never leave us or forsake us. And that when you left, you would give us a comforter. And we thank you for the comforter this morning, Father. I heard the prayers going on. Somebody rose off their bed for affliction this morning. Somebody didn't know if they was able to come out to church this morning, but here they are. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for the Spirit this morning. I don't know what the need was, but you know the need, Father. I thank you for the touch this morning. Oh my God, what a worship right now. Church, let us just worship right now. Thank you this morning. Thank you for what you have already done, Holy Spirit. And thank you for what you are going to do in each individual life in this sanctuary. Hallelujah this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you for the musician. Thank you for the songs this morning. But most of all, I thank you for your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I thank everybody who participated in worship this morning, from the deacons to the music department, to my lovely wife. I just say thank you this morning. I don't understand, but sometimes it's not about me or what I'm about to say. It's about letting the Holy Spirit have his way. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be before you long because we've already been in worship this morning. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has spoken. We, you may not have heard his words, but I felt him in my spirit. Have you felt him in the spirit that he's already. He's already doing this morning so I won't be before you long but as I reflect back on this past year as I've gone through some things I'm talking about me personally and we all can reflect back on 2023 and we can reflect back and wonder why we went through some of the things we went through wondering as we sit here in the next few hours Will 24 be like 23? But are we, we, we are not partying. I'm, I'm not a prophet. I can't tell each individual what's, what's going to happen to you in 2024. I don't know what's going to happen to me in 2024. But I know one thing I, I can book, one thing I can really say that in 2024, the same person that took me through 20 and 23 will be with me in 2024. Amen. Can I get a witness this morning? So let us turn. Let us turn. Let us stand. Let us stand. If you're able to stand. I want to, like I said, we won't be long. Let us turn to Mark. 
St. Mark chapter 4. That's New Testament. New Testament. Amen. Amen. Starting at verse 35 to 40. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Starting at verse 35. Amen. Say amen when you have it. And it reads thus, And the same day when the eve was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And in another translation, Amplified say, Let us cross over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also other ships around, little ships. And there rose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship. So that it was now full. The waves were crashing into the ships. And he was in the hidden part of the ship. On a sleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind. When he say rebuked, he, he, he took control and told the wind what to do. And he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And I'm going to throw 41 in here. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What matter man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? You may be seated. You may be seated at I, I want to talk to you for a little bit. That's just a little bit. If I want to give this title, I would give this title as more of a question. And some of you should ask this question of yourselves. And the question I, I, I'm going to ask, and, and that you should ask yourself, shall we cross over? Shall we cross over? We, we, got, we have to understand that in 2020, it seemed like it was going to be a very great year. Now, come on, come on, come on. The, the, the 2023, the, the pandemic had calmed down somewhat. Stores has opened up. The economy seemed to be improving. Even the crazy politicians seemed to have calmed down. I'm on somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Even though some of us have lost loved ones, there, there seemed to be a gathering calm in our lives. And then things seem to be getting better. But I, I, I got to let you know, just as we read this text, just I read, it, it, just, it just does not take a long time for a storm to appear. Come on, somebody. We just went through a recent storm and and they said by, 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 I looked at the news, it's 12 o'clock. They say later on the night, it's just a verse, it'll be a storm. And now just a couple hours, sure enough, a couple hours, the storm came. Church, I'm here to tell you, it don't take a long time for a storm to appear in your life. You can leave out your front door thinking everything is going all right, no problems, things are looking good, hit your job, and all of a sudden, a storm is in your way. But you see, I got to let you know, uh, uh, Brother Turney, 2023 sounded like it was going to be all right. But these last few months of 2023, I, I just got to let you know, it seemed like, uh, uh, Mr. Abel, like all hell has broken loose in 2023. We, we are now being told, I told the pandemic seemed to calm down. Now, all of a sudden, another variant has come around. Now, they say it's on the rise again, and, and now you got to go get another booster. 
And all those politicians I told you who were seeking office, it seems like they, they had lost their ever-loving mind. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they are insulting one another. They, 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 are, they are not caring about the people who they're going to serve. They're just trying to find out how they can take advantage of each and every one of us to line their own pockets. I, I thought 20 and 23 was going to go out like a sheep, but it's starting to come out like a lion. Come on, somebody. It's just, uh, it's, I got to tell you uh, that the, 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 these things, and now uh, there's this mess that's going on. We, we started out with one war. Now we got two wars. And the effect is rippling that seems like when there was just one or two people involved in this conflict, in this warfare, now we got two wars going on, the ripple effect, it seems like every country is getting involved. Everybody is talking about arming one another, putting more weapons out there, but nobody is saying nothing about, can we talk a little bit about some peace in this world today? Hallelujah. And just as I was getting used to the loss of some family members, I, I thought I was about to adjust. But I got to let you know that now that something else has popped up, another storm, and now I have a grandchild who's in trouble. I, I got to let you know that sometimes you think you're about to make it over. You're about to come out of the storm. But then, you know what happens? A storm just pops right back up and still with you. I, 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 I got to let you know. We, 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 these, we, as the storms come up in our life, I, I got to let you know we, we can't go around them. See, some of us would like to avoid the storms. We try to say, well, I'm going to go this direction and maybe I can avoid storm. I'm telling you, but there's some storms in your life that they're so big. Can I get some song lyrics in here? They're so big that you can't go around them. They're so tall you can't go over them. And you, you can't go under them. You got to just take the fact, the fact that the storm is right there in front of you. You have no choice but to go through the storm. But we have to go through the storm. And we have to go through the storm. And we have to go there because sometimes when we go through the storm, God sometimes has us go through storms. Why? Not to hurt you or make you feel inadequate, but sometimes God makes you go through the storm because you're going to come out on the other side better than when you went in on the beginning. How are you going to strengthen your faith? My wife they gave me a test once. She said, hey, how, how, how are you going to give a testimony if you never had a test? How are you going to tell somebody else, pray yourself through a storm when you ain't never been through a storm and pray yourself through? So God sends some storms in our life not to make us better, not to make us worse, but to make us better. Don't you know once you go through a storm, the next one come up, you can say, well, I've been through one. I'm sure I can go through this one. Hallelujah. Now I got to go. Let me go. Let me go. I, I know I, 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 I'm not going to be before you long, I said. But I'll tell you one thing right now. Pastor Norman, when we get through here, you go home. Don't be making no other plans to go out and do other things. Amen. You better plead the blood of Jesus and protection if you do. Amen. In our text, in our text today, Jesus, Jesus had, uh, at the beginning of chapter 4, he had begun teaching and preaching to the people. In fact, they had such a crowd, men say, is that he had to use a boat, push out from the shore to be his pulpit so he can speak. And he was speaking to them with parables so they would understand what was going through. And as it was getting late, Jesus stated to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. I mean, he's talking about the Sea of Galilee. He, he was on this side and he said, let us go over to the other side. 
And they sent the crowd away and began to cross with several other small ships. I, I had to put emphasis on this part of the scripture when he said, let us go to the other side. That, that sounds very simple, but you got to look at that simple, simple verse. It says, let us go to the other side. In other words, he's saying, when I say us, this is Jesus talking. I mean me. And if me and you let us go to the other side. And that should have been a sign to the disciples right there to have faith. Because Jesus said what he was telling them, let us go. He said, I'm going to the other side. And if I'm going to the other side, you're going to go to the other side with me. Because he said, let us go. Let, let, let us go. In other words, I, I told you I'm going. And if I'm going, you're going with me. See, some of us got to understand that we go through a storm. You got to let the storm master give you the direction and where you go. And so they begin to cross over. And a great storm, a wind came and beat the ship. In other words, the ship was tossed and, and the wind was blowing and, and the waves were coming. So a storm was coming. And this was a storm like none other. See, these, they, 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 they had never seen. these disciples, we know for a fact, four of them was experienced fishermen. But this storm, I'm sure they, they, they had been through storms, but this storm was not, it was not like any other storm they had seen before. You got to let you know. You may have experience of going through something. You may have experience of going through a storm. But I'm telling you right now, there's going to be some storms in your life. I don't care how much you've been through or who's been through. You can't handle it on your own. Uh, there's some storms that's going to come up. And you're going to need some help in the storm. And, and, and so they, they decided that, oh, we ain't seen this before. The waves are getting a little higher than we used to. The wind is blowing a little harder than we ever seen before. But I give them one thing, Sister Versi. Uh, they knew where to get some help. Uh, so they, 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 uh, I, we, we decided. And I, I got to let you know they didn't hold a business meeting. They did not take a vote. But they decided this is too much. We can't take time out for business meeting. We can't even take time out for a prayer meeting. But they said, we know somebody who's with us right now. See, thank God when you know somebody. And so they decided, okay, we can't handle this. But we know somebody. And they went to see Jesus. Jesus, who was asleep. And woke him up. Why was Jesus asleep? Because Jesus knew who he was. Jesus said, I'm sleepy because I've got control of this. And Jesus had given them a little faith. I told you, he had told them a little while ago, while we cross over. Jesus cleft because he said, I'm going to make it to the other side because I'm in control. And if they had listened to Jesus, they wouldn't have woke him up. They would have just laid down with him and said, we're going to the other side. Because I have faith in Jesus. And they asked him the question. Cares thou not that we perish? Don't you worry about us? We, you, we about to die. They had forgot. Jesus had already told them. Let us. Go to the other side. That means I'm going. You going. We all going. You ain't going to die. Because I ain't going to die. If you're with me. We're going to be over. On the other side. I got to let you know. Sisters and brothers. I have no problem.
problem with Jesus being asleep? Is he not the prince of peace? And if he's a prince of peace, he had peace and was able to sleep. Because he knew who he was and what control he had. I, 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 I wonder if they remember, they, they, they was panicking. See, sometimes we get in the midst of our trials and trials, we begin to panic. And they begin to panic, forgetting once again, let us go to the other side. Not just me, us and you. And then Jesus, in his infinite power, he rose and told the wind to hush and the storm to cease. See, we, see, Jesus said, I, 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 that if they had understood what he was talking about, that he, that he was trying to give them a faith, some faith. He said, we're going to go to the other side. I'm sure Jesus knew that storms could come, but he said, we are going to make it to the other side. And, and, and so I, I, I got to let you know that, 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 that God says you're going to make it to the other side. And so the, the, the storm ceased, showing Jesus, showing that Jesus to them that, that I have this. I have it under control. He, and I, I, I let you know, you know what? Some of us, when we're in our storms, when we're in our storms too long, you know why we're in our storms too long? Because some of us, we forget to wake up Jesus. Not, not that he's asleep all the time, but at least he's he waiting for you to call on him. We're in our storm so much. He, he's, not, he's not just sleeping on the job. He, he's there waiting on you to call on him. He had already gave him, given him a word saying, it's going to be all right. Because we, us, is going over to the other side. I, I think Jesus probably said, they coming, Brother Tony, to wake me up. They didn't believe what I told them when I said, us is going to make it over. See, some of us, we stay in our storms too long. I, you think it's funny, but you haven't woke up Jesus. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to admit that I'm in something that I cannot handle alone. He's waiting. They have forgotten what Jesus had said, let us go over. They forgot that when he was meant, he was going over to the other side. And if he was gone, they were going to go with him. I, I got to let you know that, that I, 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 I sometimes do the same thing. Minister David, sometimes my storm lasts a little longer because I forget to wake up Jesus. See, some of us be waiting to the lightning flashing and thunder rolling, and then we'll call on Jesus. But I learned, Sister Versi, when the clouds start getting a little dark, before the rain even comes, before the lightning even strikes, before the thunder even makes a noise. I call on the name of Jesus because I know a storm is on the way. Hallelujah. I, I, see, too many of us will wait till the storm is at its full strength. I've had too many storms in my life. I had to battle when they were at full strength. I said, wait a minute now. I'm doing myself harm. Let me call on Jesus when the first drop of rain comes down. When the clouds get dark, I'm calling Jesus. We are a few hours from 2024. We're about to cross over. Lord willing, I, I, I got to tell you the truth right now. I said a few hours. That means anything can happen. I pray none of us fall into any harm or danger. But tomorrow is not promised to us. I pray 2023 will be better. I must warn you, 
And that's what I'm here to do this morning. There will be some storms waiting on you. There will be some storms waiting on you in 2024. Remember, remember when it gets too much for you to handle, the same person who was with you in 2023 will cross over with you in 2024. He will bring you through a storm. I got to let you know, I, I was feeling pretty bad, brothers and sisters, when I looked up and saw pretty soon on the calendar, we'd be in 2024. And I thought about my brother and my mother, who, and, 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 I, and I, said, I said, Minister Avis, that they're not crossing over with me into 2024. And I began to question God, and, and God gave me answer. You got a lot of nerves saying that you are upset because they didn't cross over with you in 2024. But let me tell you right now, he said, Pastor Norm, no, he said, Richard, do you understand this? That they have already crossed over. They haven't crossed over in 2024, but they have already crossed over into glory. And I'm sure you would rather have them in glory than to have them in 2024. So I had to change my whole attitude and say, thank God for glory. Thank God that they crossed over into glory this morning. Our storm master reminded me, just because they're not with you, it don't mean they haven't crossed over already. See, I, I, I have to understand I'm getting a little selfish in my thought and in my love. See, love will make you selfish. Love will make you want people to be around you forever. And I'll be honest with you, I love them. But he said they've crossed over into glory. And the glory that they crossed over to is a glory where the pain that they used to tell me about doesn't exist anymore. The situations they were going through, the body being wrecked, is not with them anymore. And I know my brother, he, I got some quotes. His last word was that I'm on my way to see the king. He said, I'm about to sit at the table. Oh, he's crossed over. Who am I to say I want you here to cross over with me in 2024 so that when I go through a storm, I can call you up and talk to you so you can help me through. I'm here to let you know right now, don't count on those who are sitting around you. Don't count on your family members because they might not make it in 2024. But there is somebody, somebody who was with you in 2021, 2022, 2023. He was with you all that time. He's not going to leave you in 2024. He'll be right there with you. I'm telling you right now. That you have to understand that when you cross over, and hopefully we all will, you will have help in the storm in your life. Thank the storm master, the captain of the ship. We used to sing that old song, the old ship of Zion. And one of my favorite verses, sister, verse was, King Jesus is the captain. I'm telling you, I'd rather have him as captain than the other captain. Because I know if Jesus is my captain, not going to be no Titanic accidents. Amen. <laughs> Jesus will cross over with you in 2024. Storms may come. Remember Jesus. Let him speak peace into your storms. 2024, he spoke peace. I, I got to let you know. I told you there's going to be storms. Don't be saying, Pastor Norman cursed me. I didn't think I'd have all this mess going on in 2024. Don't put it on me. We all live our own lives. 
So when storms come, remember who is the storm master. Have Jesus speak peace into your storm. He spoke peace into the storm of sin. Come on, somebody. When the, from the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I, I got to let you know, I thank God for the storm master. I thank God for the prince of peace. I, I, I thank God for all that he's done in my life. Somebody need to say amen this morning. You had some ups and downs in 23. Come on, somebody. Don't sit here and tell your pastor everything went all right for me in 2023. Then I have to have you come in and have a little chat with you. Because one thing we don't need to do is tell and tell. Because I, all of us have been through something in 2023. We've all had some storms in our life. And I'm saying that God bless us to cross over into 2024. He will also cross over with us. Remember, he told the disciples, he said, let us go to the other side. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is saying, let us cross over to 2024. See, some of you think you're all on your own. But if you got Jesus, that old saint say you don't need nobody else. If you got Jesus, it's going to be all right. You see, I got Jesus, the storm master. He became my storm master some years ago, Mr. Davis, when I decided I can't make it through the storms on my own. I needed a little help. And not the kind of help that you guys would give me. Some of you would throw a lifeline to me. Some of you would talk to me. But I need somebody who's actually going to say, cease. Be still. Put some peace in my life. That's what we need in 2024. Hallelujah. I let you know right now. 2024, I, I'm not a prophet. I ain't going to claim to be. I can't predict what y'all are going to go through. But I want you to know one thing. You're going to go through something. If some of y'all can go through 2024 and nothing ever happened to you, I'm going to want to follow in your footsteps. Hallelujah. I'll step, 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 step right with you. But I have confidence that whatever I go through, I will have the storm master. See, I've already heard him say, Richard, let us go into glory. See, he's in glory, but he's inviting me now. One day I shall be with him in glory. Those who are already there, I'll be there with him. One day he's going to take us into glory. He's calling us. Come, let us cross over. See, he's casting us up, let us cross over. From what you thought you knew, from what you thought was your last breath, that, that, that nothing good's going to happen, that nothing's going to be success. But he said, let me cross over. Let me take you through the storm. And we got to understand this. We have to stop thinking God is only at the end of the storm. We get to the end of the storm, we want to say, thank you, Jesus. The storm is over. I told you before that when I see the first drop of rain now, I don't know how big a storm it's going to be. I don't care how small or how big. I'm calling on Jesus. And he's there at the beginning. He's there in the middle. And thank God, Ms. Avis, he's there at the end. Because that's when I'm going to be able to give him some praise and say, thank God we made it through the storm. And I thank God, and, and see, he put that bow up in the air, that rainbow, so that he made a promise to us. Uh, but, but, but sister, I'm telling you, I know he said it would be fire, not rain, but when I see it, it lets me know the storm is over for now. Hallelujah. 
as we get ready to go, as we get ready to do our invitation, there's a song I, 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 that I want, want you to hear. It's an old song. It's an old song. Come on, my dear, dear son. Amen. But we, there's, there's a song I want you to hear. Crossing over. Are you crossing over? Turn it up, Richard. Crossing over. We're crossing over. We're crossing over. One by one. are coming. Don't you want to have Don't a storm master on your side? Your Is there one this morning? Perhaps you already see. You don't have a church home. Some of you may come this morning. We're welcome in here. I'm going to add one thing. I'm going to add one more part of invitation this morning. A new year is about to start. A new year is about to start. Somebody may want to rededicate their life to the Lord. You haven't been attending church like you should. A new year is started. Wouldn't it be wonderful to start off on the right foot? There? Is there any rededication this morning? Any dedication? Rededication. Come, come, my sister. Come, my sister. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 Thank you, my sister. Come, come, come. Minister Avis, can you come with us? But I dear sister, and have prayer with her in the back. And thank you, so Minister Avis. Will thank God. Uh, amen. Read dedication. Is there one? Anyone else? You save church home, but you just need to rededicate yourself. Pastor, I haven't been coming to church like I should. I'm going to try to do better this year. See, we make all these New Year resolutions and for worldly stuff. Is anybody else? We're crossing over.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our, our, our deacon's going to come and read us our tithing scripture. Amen. Amen. As the ushers come and, and pass out the pass the offering table, a couple of announcements in your bulletin. We had a few distribution in the hall. So shall every third Friday. We see Sister Gray. We're looking for men to help volunteer in that situation. Women's fellowship every third Saturday, at eleven AM. Men's ministry meeting the last Friday monthly at six PM. We had our meeting this Friday. It was a wonderful time. Uh, we had a mix-up on announcements. We may clarify that so we have some better attendance. Gospel Music Workshop of America meets on the second Monday at 7 p.m. If you have Monolog Teach RC Minister Avis Braggs, electronic giving may be done by Cat Chap. You send up on our bulletin, dollar sign, Olive Fresno. Giveify or to go to the website, click on donate now. Amen. All right, let us let us pray over our offering. Father, we thank you for this offering, Father. We ask you to bless those, Father, that gave. We ask you to bless those who did not have it to give. May it be used for the purpose which it was gathering. That was for the furthering of your kingdom. Deep blessings. We ask my son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're about to go one last announcement. We want to start the new year off right. So New Year's Day, the church will be here at the church Every day you're sick, I'm sorry, 12 to 1 for prayer. If you desire, come out 12 to 1, one hour, come out in prayer this week so we can start this new year off right. Or if you can't make it out, stop and pray. Amen. Stop and pray. Hallelujah. Stop and pray. All right. Amen. We have coming with us this morning, rededication and membership. Come on, membership. Amen. <laughs> Latoya Brown. Amen. Sister Brown. Amen. She is the daughter of our deacon trainee, Mr. Ed Brown. Amen. All right. So what up? What what we thank you. We welcome you. We we just happy to have you join us. So what we're going to do, we're going to have Sister Brown come up, and as we dismiss, let's go around and shake her and give her a hug and let her know she's welcome in this place. Amen? Come on, Sister Brown. Come on. Come on. Oh, the right hand of fellowship. Amen. Just a minute. Yes? What, what meeting? Talk tomorrow. All week, starting tomorrow. 12 to 1. All right. Amen. So let us stand. Let us stand and come around. Give us a little marching music, Brother Andre. I know you got some. <laughs> 